Hey, how's it going? Justin here with Redis. Just want to take a little bit of your time to go over hashtags. Now, I talked about this briefly in a talk on the Redis Monthly Live back in September with Guy Royce. If you want to see that original talk, go ahead and check it out in YouTube in Redis's channel. Uh, but I just wanted to actually go over it a little bit more formally and dive in a little bit deeper and just watch me code out uh, using hashtags to actually keep data within the same shard in a cluster. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so what I want to first start off is just exploring the differences between a clustered uh, node and a non-clustered node of Redis. So a non-clustered node of Redis is just having one single instance, uh, more often than not, on uh, port 6379. And it's just sitting in memory, say, on your computer or on Redis Cloud. Just... Sorry, a microphone just fell. So when entering data into a regular local or regular single instance of Redis, we just simply set our keys and they are set to a value within our memory space. With a clustered instance of Redis, when we actually set a key, it needs to determine the hash slot. So what is a hash slot? A hash slot is a namespace or a location created by Redis that goes from 0 to 16,383. And this allows us to store and retrieve at specific numerical locations your data, no matter how big or how small the number of shards is or are. So if we have, let me look at this example here. Here we have a clustered and a non-clustered node. Uh, the non-clustered node is just another word for your local Redis instance, uh, either connected with the Redis cloud or running locally on your computer with usually the port 6379. Um, the data that you write goes directly into your memory and it's all together. Uh, with a clustered node, data is written across multiple shards if, if you have multiple more than one shard. Uh, so data is, isn't always going to be in the exact same location as some other data. So uh, with your local computer, you write two different sets or two different lists. They will be within the same location on your computer, uh, in your memory. With a clustered computer setup, they might not always be in the same shard. And if you have two different keys, and two different shards, and you want to work with them with a multi-key command like rpopl push or zenter or sdiff, things like that, then you're going to run into some problems. Okay, so let's actually just go ahead and check this out. So when I'm actually clustering, I'm using hash slots. Uh, what is a hash slot? A hash slot is simply a location uh, that is numerically determined to store your information. So instead of actually hashing um, using a shard quantity uh, to determine a hash location or location of your data, we're actually going to use a hash slot. So here we got, we're using a CRC16 hashing algorithm on a key, and when they're modding it by 16,384. So that's what we actually do to determine the hash slot location. So um, let's go for an example. Uh, let's say that I have slot 11,940. So in a single sh uh, cluster of just one single shard, I'm labeling it here shard zero, um, it's going to be right approximately in that location in a shard. So the beauty about using hash slots within our cluster is that the hash slots move, but it's not determined by the hash, not, not hash slot number. So let's check out this new view. Now I have two shards. Previously, shard zero only had hash slots from zero to 16,384. This next setup where I have two shards, shard zero now has zero to 8,190, shard one has 8,191 to 16,383. So we still know the location of my little example slot. It's just now in shard one. So let's expand this. Let's add another shard. So now we have one going from 0 to 5,460, uh, the second one going up to 10,923, and the third one taking all the way up to 16,383. 
If you see my little blue example there, he's still there. It's just being moved based off the hash slot count and the hash slot location. So lastly, this actually reflects uh, the clustering, uh, creating a cluster in Redis example that I actually released not too long ago. If you follow along there, you can see you have this exact same setup. We have four shards, and now they're evenly distributed uh, between 0, 4,095, 4,096 to 8,191, 8,190, oh, that should be two, to 12,287, and then 12,288 to 16,383. So now they're all evenly distributed amongst four shards. And again, you can see my little, my little blue example there is exactly where it should be. It's based off shard number, not, I mean, I'm sorry, hash lot number, not shard number. Because again, we don't care about the number of shards. Those can increase and decrease based off of traffic, time of day, our budget, you know, what have you. What we really care about is the hash slot location, which is figured out with that CR16 hash algorithm modded by the total number of hash slots, which is again, 16,384. Okay, so I'm going to go onto my actual uh, cluster setup, and then I'm going to call um, cluster slots. So this is gonna give me a breakdown of all the slots that exist in, or the uh, hash slots that exist within my uh, cluster. And so I see here, uh, from hash slot 0 to 4095, it's assigned to um, port 7000, which is going to be the primary. And this is the hash ID of my primary, which ends in 68F7A. And then the replica that is copying all the information from my primary is at port 7004. And here is the last five of the hash ID. And so this gives me a breakdown of all the information of all of um, my shards. This actually inf information is really helpful, um, but I can actually do one better. Let's take a look at what that command actually does uh, if we added some visualization to it. So again, uh, node 7000 or cluster 7000, which is a primary, uh, has the node ID 68F7A, replica ID of 2C476, and it has slots of 0 through 4095. And here's the replica um, that has the information. Here's the replica ID, the primary ID, and it's replicating all the slots 0 through 4095. Cool? All right. So I really want to just want to focus on the primary shards for now, since we're dealing with hash slots. Uh, I'm just going to assume that replication is great and is working in the background. So keep this mental image in your mind. We have four different shards and 16,384 hash slots are distributed equally amongst all four. Okay, cool. So now let's go to an actual coding example. Um, say I want to create like a, I guess you could say a, a social network of some sort. And I'm going to create um, this set of user 512 following. That's going to be the key name. And this user is following four other users, user 271, user 973, user 114, and user 056. All right, so I enter that into Redis. Redis has redirected to slot 7578 because again, we are setting up into hash slots. We're storing our data into hash slots when we're, when we're clustering. So, and uh, it, I'm glad it told me that. Um, and you can see that it actually switched me from, uh, I was on node 7000 with my command line interface. Now I've switched over to the 7001. And if I'm ever curious as far as what uh, key slot I'm at or what, um, what's a hash slot my, my key is at, I can call cluster key slot, and then I can just type in user 512 following, and that will tell me the hash slot where it's located. So 7,578. So that means that it would be in here, this uh, 7,001 port. And in a correct, again, it moved me to 7,001. So now let's create another set. Um, I'm following these users. Why don't I create a set of uh, users that are following me? So I'm gonna call it followed by. So 
uh, set add user 512 followed by, and I'm followed by user 271, user 973, and user 197, and user 661. So I'll enter that. Okay, so it redirected me to slot 3322 because when we actually run um, our, our, our key through that algorithm, uh, it directed us to uh, 3322 as a hash slot. So I'm just gonna verify again, and this is just you know me being a little paranoid. I wanna make sure that everything's right. So followed by, and again, yeah, 3322 is the location of this data. So cool, we have two pieces of information um, in our database rule e quite easily. So now let's go over here. Um, so now I'm looking at uh, the diagram of user 512 following stored at 7,578 and user 512 followed by at location 3322. So we have two different keys and two different shards in my cluster. Cool. So these this is again, this is for people that are visual learners. So this this actually helps me when I was starting with clustering. So now um, let's do something fun. I want to find the intersection of the two. So basically, who are mutual friends? Um, between user 512 and who follows them and who's followed by user 512. So to do that, I'll use s enter, which is an intersection, and I'll do user 512 followed by, or I'm going to start with following, and then let's do user 512 followed by. And again, who's who am I following, or who's user 512 following, and who is following user 512. So the intersection of those two will basically give us the mutual follows. Um, so let's check it out. Ooh, an error. So cross slot. Keys in request don't hash to the same slot. So basically what's happening is that we're trying to look at two different shards, at two different locations to run an intersection. And that's not going to work for various reasons. Uh, Redis is fast. Redis is very fast. To retrieve data between two shards would not guarantee fast retrieval and intersection of the, of the data. So it's just not going to work. Multi-key commands will not work across shards. They will only work within the same hash slot. Um, and this is, again, to protect the speed and integrity of Redis. Uh, it just would not make sense to compare and work with multiple keys amongst multiple shards. So there's a way around this. Um, and it's you know pretty pretty cut and dry. Um, we basically use um, a pair of brackets. Now I'll see if I can copy this in without us actually uh, automatically entering. So I'm using s add and then user and then I'm actually putting the user number, the unique user number 512 within curly braces. Now what happens is usually the hash slot, uh, the hashing algorithm to determine the location will uh, hash the entire key. Now sometimes I don't want to hash the entire key, I just want to hash a specific subsection or substring of the key that will be common amongst other keys. So here I'm telling it to hash the number oh, whoop, the, the number 502 or 512 um, and that will determine each hash slot number. So I'm going to enter the exact same data as normal user 271, user 973, user 114, user 056. These are all people that user 512 is following. So I'll enter that. Not a problem. Out of curiosity, let's see what hash slot that actually has um, hashed to. So I'll do cluster key slot and then user colon and then curly brace 512 curly brace colon following. And it goes to 3,808. Cool. Okay. So um, as you can see, I haven't switched uh, clusters, so it's still on uh, my shard zero. Uh, it hasn't skipped shards, so I'm still in my shard zero. So now let me add uh, my followed by. So I'm going to add my followed by user 
And again, I'm uh, going to use the curly braces. So I'll just paste that in. Uh, set add user colon curly brace 512 curly brace. So again, this is all uh, I'm telling the uh, hashing algorithm to only hash this value here. And it's going to have the exact same hash slot as uh, what's up here. Because again, I told it to only hash this section right here. So this is going to guarantee that we only um, are hashing that one specific thing between both of the keys, and we're going to be using that same hash slot. So let me just uh, check to make sure, followed by. OK, cool. So I just called cluster key slot on my followed by key. And now I see that both are actually um, hash slot 3808. And just for us visual learners, um, you can see I'm sorry, I should put that in curly braces, um, that both of these are going to hash to 3,808. And when I run my intersection command, so let's do uh, Z enter, and then let's do num keys, that's going to be two. And then my first key is, I'll just, let's, let's save everybody a little bit of time, call this. So this is going to be my first set that I want to look at, and I want to intersect it with this set. And this will give me the intersection of those two keys because they're in the exact same uh, key slot or a hash slot in the exact same shard, which happens to be shard zero. Now, again, if we tried to do this with, oh, why did I call Zinter? Oh. That's not right. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let me call S enter. <laughs> wow. A few moments later. So now when I call S enter, the intersection between my two keys. Uh, let me just copy them over just because, you know, save everybody a little bit of time. Following and followed by, um, I will have them in the exact same shard, in the exact same hash slot. And so there we go. User 973 and 271 are both following user 512 and follow, uh, user 512 is following user 973 and 271. OK, so hopefully that was helpful. Um, the main takeaway from this quick little talk is make sure that if you're using multi-key commands on your data types, such as uh, some string, uh, some use cases for strings, lists, sets, and sorted sets, make sure to use this, these little curly braces, which are called hashtags, to actually enforce that they're going to be in the exact same hash slot, thus in the exact same shard, Thus, you get that speed that Redis demands of itself and of our applications. OK, hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, as always, please don't hesitate to reach out to our Discord channel or leave a comment in the video. All right. Thank you. Have a good day.